Hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to talk a little about matching Copic colors to tin pins, and you could also call this Frankie and his cat. It's Frankenstein and a little kitty, and they're really cute stamps. They've got these tin pins that have a little glue dot that you hold them down with, and I'm going to show you how I'm matching my colors. I've got my tin pin set up so it's right next to my image and I can adjust my colors. There's a little heavier green at the top and I'm gonna try to blend that in so it kind of matches down at the bottom. Now you could just not color anything except for that green on his face. Don't color his eyeballs because the part that's gonna show when you glue that tin pin on it is gonna be the tin pin, not your coloring. But it's always fun to practice your coloring and this will help you if you wanna make more cards than you bought tin pins for because they only come with three for each stamp then you can continue to color them. So it's a great way to practice that, but it's also gonna make it look like they go together when you put the pin on it. If I were to color his hair black like I normally would color it, because I'm thinking he has black hair rather than gray hair, then it would look weird if all of a sudden the edges of his hair on top were gray. So I'm gonna give him a little gray fringe around the bottom by coloring into my darker gray with a lighter gray. The lighter gray is gonna eat away at the darker gray, so if you go too dark, then just use a lighter gray and push some of that color out. It's almost like using the colorless blender, except you don't get as much of that weird mottling going on. You may need to do a little adjusting to smooth it out, but it's not nearly as bad as when you use colorless blender itself. So I'm gonna color the rest of the image using purples and um, like purple for his shirt, brown for his jacket. You could make his jacket black but I thought it would be nice to make it brown and then it didn't look like the whole thing was a black image. So I'm gonna give him a little bit more color that way. And I'll show you a little tiny bit of background when we get to uh, the end of coloring this image, but not a full background because I just wanted to keep this one focused on trying to match that tin pin and coloring a much simpler image. I know a lot of my videos when I get crazy with the backgrounds, everybody loves to watch, but then nobody goes out and makes anything because they just got excited and they watched. Nobody got the stamp set, nobody tried it. So I find when I do things where I'm just coloring the image itself, you guys feel a little more confident to do that. And if that's you, tell me in the, the comments down below. If I scare you off with some of my more advanced coloring things, I, I don't intend to scare you off. My hope has always been to just inspire you rather than to make you feel like, well, I'll never buy that stamp set because I could never do what she did with it. Because that's not the point of me doing these. My point is in helping you to be able to do something fun. So here's the really simple shading. I'm going out from his feet, straight out like in a triangle shape, getting lighter. Shadows get lighter as they get further away from the object. And look, I'm just putting a little hint of his hands. Just a hint. Doesn't have to be much. But doesn't that make it look more like a shadow of him since it's got just his little fingers there as shadows? And then I glued it down on a really simple black card base with the tin pin on it held down with a glue dot. Now the kitty is going to be a gray kitty. Now normally I would make a black kitty or something else because, you know, gray kitties, they're not as exciting to color, I guess. But since the tin pin has a gray face, I don't really want to make a dark face or something else because I want to use the tin pin on it and want it to match. So I'm using a bunch of grays from the outside in, darker on the outside, lighter on the inside. And you can keep checking, just keep putting that, that little kitty on top of the image to see if it looks right. You can probably, with this particular one, get away with mixing in a little bit of warm grays as well because you can tell the difference. There's like a little more of a blue tint to the colors that I'm coloring and a, maybe a little warmer tint on the tin pin itself, but either one is gonna work. Don't stress out about it. I'm not into stressing. I'm into just people getting out there and making things and having fun doing it. So the, since the rest of my cat got darker, I decided I wanna make a little bit darker around the edges of the kitty's face and trying to practice my blending. And again, you don't have to color the face underneath if you're gluing the tin pin on top, but it's great practice. And it makes, your, makes it so that you're going to know what to do with your stamp set later. Because especially once you've given away your cards with your tin pins on them, 
you won't have that for a reference. So it's good to practice so that you kind of get it in your system. You know what to do with your coloring of it. And also make sure you take pictures of things that you're going to send away to somebody because then you can remember what you colored it as last time. So even if you don't blog or you don't post everything on Instagram or Facebook, it's always helpful to have pictures to remind yourself of what you did. I'm going to use some other Halloween colors, which I've never figured out quite why purple and green go with orange to make Halloween, but they do. I guess we all needed something other than orange and black to make Halloween Halloween, and it's certainly more fun to add some purple in it. And since my kitty was gray, I didn't want to go black with the hat. So that's why I chose the purple so I could have a little bit of difference in color or else he would, that might look like an extension of the kitty. And it also helps to reflect the purple that I'm putting in the bag at the bottom. And then some green on the leaves. And once you've spent your time coloring the big deals, then don't stress out about the little things. So these little leaves, are not important once you nail the kitty coloring and you'll focus on making the pumpkin look nice and round and the rest of it doesn't really matter. You could even leave them with no shading whatsoever and be just fine. So I'm coloring the inside with yellow on my pumpkin and then I'm going to do an orange across all of it. Now orange, there are two oranges that are like pumpkin orange. One is YR04 and the other is YR16. Both of them are practically the same color. You don't need both. So anytime I say YR04 or YR16, you can substitute the other one. The hex chart would show you that because they're they're really right next to each other and they, they pass for each other very easily. I'm using an E19 for my dark shading. I'm just going right beside where all those indentation lines are around my pumpkin and then around where the bottom is because that's where a lot of the shading will be around along the bottom. And then the kitty is going to cast a little bit of a shadow where it's laying on top of the pumpkin. I'm going to take a YR18. Remember, YR16 is close to the YR04. So YR18 is just a little step darker. And it's going to give me a shade that's in between that E19 and the, the orange color that I used. And I'm just going to concentrate on smoothing out the edges of where that dark edge meets not worried about where the YR18 goes into the orange, the light orange color, because I'm going to smooth that out with another layer of that color. See, when I go over it with the YR04 or the YR16, it just smooths right out. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as an old boss of mine used to say. He was British. I don't know if that's a British thing, but easy peasy, lemon squeezy seems appropriate when we're coloring uh, fruits and vegetables. Now to create a shadow under this or a light cast from it, I've just done some yellow and you can use any yellow and just create that triangle shape. And then I'm going to make all of the shadows go out from the pumpkin in the same way as I did with Frankie, as if there's light in the back. But I want to make the make it look like there's light coming out of his mouth and his eyes onto the ground. So I'm just going to make a round shape, like kind of like the smiley face. If you have more card, then you might make a reverse pumpkin face. But here I can make just a little bit of that yellow smile show up down in the bottom, and it looks like I'm a genius. And you can say I'm a genius, but I'm not a genius. I'm just trying to fake it. And that's what a lot of coloring is. It's faking it so that you trick people's eye into believing what you just colored. Now just for fun, I colored these as well with some scenes from the Autumn Scenes Copic class. It's a mini course over at art-classes.com. Link in the description. There will also be one on the screen in a moment. If you'd like to learn how to make some scenes behind whatever the images are. So that big tree behind Frankie is one of the lessons. And then the, the row of trees in the background is part of one of the other lessons. And for this one, I just added a bunch of leaves, basically replicating the ones that are in the stamp down on the ground below my little kitty cat. So that's about it for today. Hope you enjoyed this, that you learned something and that you will go color something. That is the point. Go color something yourself. I hope to inspire you to do that. So feel free to check out the class if you're interested. Subscribe if you haven't. Watch some more videos, but by all means, go get some art done.